Hello, I am Deepa Narayanan and I'm a lead program director at the SBIR Development Center at the National Cancer Institute. The NCI, SBIR and STTR programs support over 450 cancer projects at any given time. Almost all of these projects are regulated by the FDA. So the NCI and FDA are natural partners in getting these technologies commercialized. So I'm very glad to be part of this workshop focusing on pivotal steps in oncology therapy development. The SBIR and STTR programs are the largest seed funds available for startups. In today's talk, I will talk about what these programs do, how they are managed at NCI, and a few tips to write a successful SBIR application. The SBIR STTR program is a congressionally mandated set aside program. There is about $1 billion annually at NIH spread across all of the NIH institutes available for supporting small businesses that serve the mission of that particular institute. NCI has one of the largest programs at NIH and consequently has the largest SBIR program. Our budget is approximately about $180 million each year to support oncology small businesses. The NCI has a centralized office under NCI's Office of the Director to manage the SBIR program. The Development Center has central oversight of the 450 projects that we support. In addition, we provide guidance to new applicants, define funding opportunities, conduct outreach, to get more promising technologies into our portfolio. In addition, we provide training, networking, and other resources that can help our awardees and applicants commercialize their technologies. Why would one seek SBIR STTR funding? Well, I have mentioned that they are the largest sources of stable early stage funding available to life science small businesses. One of the advantages of securing SBIR funding is that in addition to providing funds to do feasibility studies, it provides recognition and visibility to the small business, which they can then leverage in attracting additional investment from VCs or strategic partners. SBIR funds are grants. It is not a loan. You do not have to repay the money and it is non-dilutive. And the IP rights are retained by the small business. These are a few examples of SBIR STTR applicants. CellSite is an example of a company that has actually leveraged SBIR STTR funding to develop their technology and then gain external pharma support. Laurie Hazelhurst from Modulation used SBIR STTR to translate the basic research that she was doing under an R01 grant and go into product development mode. I would now like to focus on a few application success tips for obtaining early stage non-dilutive funding from the federal government. We always want more innovative cancer startups in our portfolio, so we look forward to hearing from you. The first tip is to figure out if you're ready to apply. To be eligible for an SBIR or an STTR award, the company should be an organized for-profit United States small business concern at the time of award, majority owned and operated by US individuals, the company has to have less than 500 employees. However, in the case of an SBIR, the principal investigator's primary employment should be with the small business concern both at the time of the award and for the entire duration of the project period. That is, the PI should be employed at least more than 50% by the company. Again, in the case of SBIR, uh, majority venture-backed companies can apply as long as no single entity owns more than 50% of the company. These STTR has similar eligibility, except the PI does not have to be with the small business, but they do require a collaborative agreement with a research institution like a an university. In either case, SBIR or STTR, the award is always made to the small business. At the SBIR Development Center, we have 12 program directors to manage both the science and commercialization aspects of each application. Uh, each of our program directors have expertise in different cancer areas and manage a different portfolio based on expertise and interest. I encourage all potential applicants to talk to a program director before you apply. If you're an applicant and have 
a new applicant and have never received an NIH award before, the Applicant Assistance Program can help you. This is a program where we have funded an external contractor to help promising companies with their whole application process. Note that these are not grant writers, but they will help you with dotting the I's and crossing the T's for the application. It's a free program, but it is competitive, and we do encourage women underrepresented scientists in biomedical research and idea state companies to apply. The next tip is to understand your funding opportunity announcement. At NCI, we fund via both grants and contracts. Grants are generally investigator initiated. That means the uh, applicant can apply to any technology as long as it meets the mission of the NIH. Or targeted solicitation focused on NCI priority areas. We also fund through SBIR contracts. Contracts are targeted solicitations with a far narrower scope and they are key NCI priority areas that have a strong commercialization potential. This is very important to NCI because about 15 to 20% of our budget is spent on contracts. Contract topics are usually released in summer with a due date in October. The SBIR and STTR are considered to have three phases. The phase one component is the proof of concept phase. We typically fund about $400,000 for about six to 12 months project period. The phase two is the full research and development phase with a funding of about $2 million, typically for two years. The phase 2B is a special NCI uh, SBIR award. We also call it the bridge. It is for clinical validation and translation and amounts to about $4 million in three years. This is our largest award. We expect companies to bring in a competitive one is to one match from third party funding for all uh, for the funds that requ are requested by the applicant. The phase three is the commercialization phase. And here is when it is critical for the company to raise private capital to commercialize their technology. Companies can apply for fast track where they submit both phase one and phase two together and limit the time between grants, but it is competitive and it is best attempted only if you have substantial preliminary data. Direct to phase two is allowed for SBIR companies. Again, the proof of concept must be done um, prior to application. This is a list of funding opportunities that the NCI participates in. Our website, sbir.cancer.gov, is a great resource to see more of the funding and non-funding resources that we have ongoing currently. The omnibus solicitation is our most popular solicitation. Most of the applicants that we fund apply through the solicitation. You can apply to phase one, phase two, fast track, or direct to phase two under the omnibus. We have a separate solicitation for those projects that have clinical trials. Uh, there are three receipt dates for these solicitations, September, Jan, and April 5th of each year. It is important to note that at NCI, we will um, accept any technology at NCI SBIR as long as it is relevant to the cancer patient, provider, or caregiver. We have a brand new funding opportunity that I'm very excited about. We are calling this our NCI Concept Award. And the goal behind this is to fund really early stage disruptive technologies. The applications that we get at the NCI often um, have preliminary data. And although it's not required um, in the solicitation, it is required to be competitive. And therefore, the truly radical concepts do not enter into the program. This is our effort to remedy that. We welcome innovative ideas without preliminary data into the program. We will provide $300,000 for phase one funding to fund experiments to obtain initial de-risking and proof of concept data. In this pilot program, we are focusing on innovative and potentially transformative therapies, diagnostic tools, or preventive strategies focused on pediatric or rare cancers. Proposals do not require preliminary data at all which, like I said, is not the norm for SBIR. Proposals are due on July 23rd. The next step that I have is to focus on the product. Uh, and this is important because the very first thing that I look for in an application is what is the product? 
Um, and it is an uh, important thing to keep in mind because SBIR awards are different from submitting an academic grant application. While the academic grant application is science focused, the SBIR is product focused. Um, even if the science is wonderful, if it doesn't really result in a product, it is not appropriate for SBIR. Again, take the time to refine your vision of the product. Talk to end users, key opinion leaders, technical experts, investors, commercialization experts to define what your product is and how it fits the market and in the clinic. Review a few sample application. There's a link for that uh, given here. And review Project Reporter. This is a database that lists projects the NIH has funded, both in academic and the SDIR space, to just check out what NCI or NIH has funded before. And again, discuss your aims with an NCI SBIR program officer. Another critical tip is to understand the review criteria by which your application is reviewed. Keep in mind that all applications are generally reviewed at the Center for Scientific Review. The CSR study sections are available online so you can get a look at who the typical reviewers are. Know the NIH review criteria. Your application is reviewed based on the significance of the project. Are you addressing an important and met need? Is there a market for the proposed product? What is your approach? Are the methods adequate? Are you aware of all of the pitfalls? Do you have an alternative plan? What is really innovative about your technology? How do you compare with the current standard of care? Do you have the right team to accomplish the objectives listed in your application? Do you have the right resources to help accomplish those objectives? Do you have a good business strategy? Do you understand the regulatory and reimbursement environment? All of these are questions that are answered by the peer review process, and it is important for you to know uh, the, these criteria very well. The last tip that I have is to take advantage of the program. One important thing that I want to highlight is that we provide more than just funding. We have a number of resources that, um, uh, that are at NCI, uh, and some across in NIH that are available for our awardees and applicants. These include workshops and webinars, entrepreneurial training programs like the i focusing on customer discovery and understanding your value proposition. We have a very well-organized investor initiatives program aimed at connecting companies to future investors. We have mentoring programs and regulatory assistance programs as well. One program that I do want to highlight is our CARE program that is connecting awardees with regulatory experts. Where we have been working with our FDA colleagues, we encourage companies to seek guidance from FDA early on in the product development cycle. And in order to do so, we have a program where we work with the FDA to facilitate that early interaction to get some of the questions answered. FDA colleagues have also been very generous with their time and usually attend our once in two year resources workshop and meet with companies directly. And we've also been putting together a list of curated links from various FDA websites that, can, um, that cancer companies can use as a starting point for answering some regulatory FAQs. Another important resource is our investor network. We realize that we're all working together uh, because NIH funding alone is never sufficient to fund a technology all the way into the clinic. That's one reason we set up this program to help connect companies to follow on funding. In the next session, Colleen and Christy will talk about some tips to attract VC funding. And on that note, I will end my presentation. If there's anything I want you to take away from this presentation, it is to contact program before you apply for the SBIR award. You can also sign up on our website and we are available on most social media platforms. And with that, thank you so much.